Today I'm going to show you how I get really sharp photos, both handheld and from a tripod. And later on, I'll have a troubleshooting section going over the common problems as to why your photos might not be as sharp as you want them to be. The first thing is getting your camera stable. And the best way to do this is to use a tripod. Now, if you don't like tripods or you don't own one, don't worry, I'll be doing a handheld section a little bit later on. If the conditions are still and there's not much wind about, I'll get the camera up to about eye level so I'm not hunched over it. But if it is windy, I'll keep the camera and tripod low. I'll sometimes splay the legs out a little bit more and I'll just try and find somewhere that's sheltered from that wind. I normally shoot in aperture priority, but for this exercise, just turn your camera to manual mode. If you use a DSLR, turn off the image stabilization. With a mirrorless camera, it's not so important. There is another thing that you have to do as well if you shoot with a DSLR, and that's to turn the mirror lock up function on. If you're not familiar with DSLRs, there's a mirror that flaps about when you take a photo, and this can cause movement in your camera, and that transfers to movement in your frame. With mirrorless cameras, as the name suggests, there's no mirror, so this isn't a problem. Next, set your focus. For a big open landscape, I'll focus on the furthest thing I can see. But a scene like this dam, I'll focus on the dam because that is the subject. As long as I can get the green square, I know it's in focus. If you're not sure about this, use the magnify tool, switch to manual focus, and then get it to the most in focus point. This may take some time and you might find that you have to slowly rock the focus dial back and forth to dial it in. But in doing this, it will get you more familiar with your camera and how it works, which again is always a good thing. Every lens has a sweet spot in the aperture range. Aperture is measured in F numbers. All you need to know is that the smaller the F number, the bigger the hole is in your lens that lets that light into your camera. So with an F5.6 lens, I'll set this down to F8 or F11. If you've got a faster lens like an F2.8 or an F1.4, again, close it down. With most lenses, there does seem to be a sweet spot between F8 and F11. With your ISO, set it to 100. You can go above this, but just set it to 100 for now. This will normally give you the image with the least amount of noise. Noise is a bit like static on an old TV. The more of it there is, the fuzzier the picture is. There is a lot more to it than that, but I'm just keeping things as simple as possible. Next, set your shutter speed to get a good exposure. With shutter speed, if you're shooting landscapes, as long as there's nothing moving in your frame and you're shooting from a tripod, you can go as long as you need. But if something is moving in there, is it important or is it part of the subject? If so, you might have to increase your shutter speed to freeze that movement. But if you're shooting in the day, there should be enough light to cope with this. If the subject isn't moving, turn on the self timer or use a remote shutter release if you have one. Again, this reduces the amount of time you're touching the camera when it's taking the photograph giving you a sharper image. Then take the photo. Once you've taken it, you need to have a look on the back of the camera to make sure it's sharp. There's nothing worse than leaving a location, getting home, and finding out that all of your images are a little bit blurry. Look back at the photo you've just taken, zoom into 100%, and then look around it to check the sharpness. Now, before I talk about handheld shooting, you do really have to look at the quality of light that you've got on the scene in front of you. If it is a dark and gloomy day, it's harder to get a sharp photo. You can get all of the other settings I'm talking about right, but if you don't have contrast in the image, this takes away from that sharpness. Check out these two photos. One was taken with good light and lots of contrast, and the other was taken on a gloomy day. The one with good light does look sharper, and this is a big thing to understand. Sometimes you'll be doing absolutely everything right, but there'll be things out of your control that will make your photo less sharp. However, when you do have good light, but you're still getting soft photos, that's when these tips will help. For handheld shots, the process is a little bit different. You won't need a shutter release cable or the mirror lockup function, but if it is blowing a gale, it's worth getting out of that wind. If there's a tree or a lamppost nearby, it's good to brace your camera against it to keep it steady. Now, if you don't have anything to brace yourself against, what you want to do is lock your elbows in so they're close to your ribs and use the viewfinder. Here is a lot more stable than out here. When you're holding the camera, I use my left hand underneath the lens and obviously the right hand on the grip. This position is nice and steady. With my settings, I tend to follow the same rule as I mentioned earlier. I keep my aperture between F8 and F11. I try and get my ISO down as close to 100 as possible, and then with my shutter speed, I follow the focal length shutter speed rule. So let's say I'm shooting at 50mm, I'll keep my shutter speed to 1 50th of a second or faster. 
If I'm shooting at say 200 mil, it'll be one 200th of a second or faster. And then at 400, one 400th or faster. If you shoot with a crop sensor camera like the Sony A6000 series, you will have to change this a little bit and you'll have to times it by 1.5. So let's say you're shooting at 50 mil, you'd have to set your shutter speed to 175th or faster. On the other hand, if you're shooting at 200 millimeters, you'd set your shutter speed to 1/300th or faster. Now, if this all sounds too complicated to you, there is another way when the light is dropping and you're having to use slower and slower shutter speeds. Now, I have covered this in a previous video, but basically it's to put the camera in drive mode, take lots of shots, and using the law of averages, one of those shots will be a lot more stable than the others. In using this technique, I can almost throw out that focal length shutter speed rule, but it is good when you're first learning to learn this rule so you know then when you can break it. Another thing you can do when it's getting really dark is literally put your camera down. You can either put it on a bench, a picnic table or a wall, just somewhere where you can literally leave it you put it in the self timer mode, then you'll be able to use a lot slower shutter speed than you would be able to just shooting handheld. So check this out. I've put my camera on the bench. I've got a six stop ND on this and I'm pointing it at the middle tower of Penagari Dam here in Elan Valley. But that tower in the middle, it's nice, crisp and sharp. As it does get darker, you will have to change your settings to suit by opening up your aperture, slowing down your shutter speed or raising your ISO. But just know that in doing any one of these three things, it will take away a little bit of the sharpness in your images. Now for the troubleshooting. If your photo isn't sharp, have a look at the whole of the photo, zoom in on different parts, and see if there's any part of the photo that is in focus. If this is the case, the camera has focused on the wrong thing. It might be worth watching a video on the focusing system to your specific camera. So then you'll understand why you might have focused on that other thing than the subject that you wanted to focus on. On the other hand, it might be completely blurry and you might have just missed focus. If this is the case, take another shot and check it. If your photo's blurry, but it looks like it's been smeared in one direction or another, this is because that shutter speed has dropped a little bit too low and the movement of your hands has transferred into the photograph. All you have to do in this case is raise your shutter speed and change the other two settings to suit. Sometimes with clouds or where there's a single color, the camera struggles to find anything to latch onto. If this is the case, just find a horizon or find a contrasty edge, get the focusing point on that and the focusing system will work. Now, this is another case where you might have to set focus and turn it to manual focus, but this is where back button focusing works so well. Sometimes air quality will have an effect on your sharpness. If it's a little bit hazy and you're shooting at the end of a really long lens, like a 400 or a 600, it'll be hard to get that photo sharp just because there's so much thickness in that air between the end of your lens and the thing that you're trying to photograph. So when you are using a telephoto lens, it's much better to be using it on a really bright, clear day. Now, if you follow all of these rules, but you notice that the background or the foreground is a little bit blurry still, you might have to focus stack. It sounds really hard, but it's really straightforward. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how to do it. I'll see you next time.